switch sides and see the skateboarder. She does not like, he does not like that slope. No. So would you call this now flooding? Not decreasing or increasing distance? <laughs> Famous now, bro. Hey, you can help us out if you like, mate. Do you mind if she can't get a quick skateboard on the ground and we'll um, just over there? So all we're trying to do is just socialise the dog to yeah, different so experiences. He's a, bit and he's a little bit, so little bit a, wary about the skateboard. Let it. Just put it up here. And let it, just let him have a look at it. Thanks, <clears> dude. <throat> Thanks, Abe. Good on you, man. How good is that? Nice little recovery. Yep. <laughs> nice little finish, buddy. You're cooked. We're done. Yeah. yeah. So you can ask me questions as we walk back to Cabra. Well, I guess my, my first question, my biggest question is how do you see that interaction with the skateboard? Well, how do you see it playing out from start to finish and the recovery? Sure, so um, it's never good, so for a working puppy we ideally want to see a dog that never worries about anything. Sure. So I hate seeing that. But more important than every, every dog has something, every puppy has something that spooks it at some stage that it doesn't like, that it's a little slow on, right? And especially if you're trying to give it broad enough experiences so um, more important than that is the recovery right but if you notice I sort of I use that little three-point sort of protection system for bugs and just stuck him in the pocket yeah and um, and so I take it an, an important part of that was to not increase distance from the stimulus and not decrease it yeah keep him at that distance that he display that behavior well, he, st he, he still took food at that distance so I knew that that was about the distance it was a distance he was comfortable at and previous to that I'd already set up that um, he was comfortable in that position we've used that a number of times yeah and he knows that he stays still and he doesn't he can't flee he's sort of in that safe pocket so to speak I guess yeah and um, it allows me like a 
it allows me to work him through things. And I think you could probably see, well, you know dogs, man, you could probably see as much as I could, like he got way more comfortable. Yeah. Just given that time to sit there and soak it in. Yeah. Right? Um, and we saw that kid like come up with the, the skateboard, got closer to him, yeah. and the kid come onto the grass, and uh, he just stayed put, and he processed that. And this is one of these things that people have problems with is that, you know, we're taught that it's wrong to ever stress a puppy. Yeah, well, we can do it and not be a fucking idiot about it. Correct, yeah. Right? And so set up a few things like that, um, and you can get improvement. But if you start letting him run away from things like that, and it's, and it's an exposure where you can have a potentially, uh, where you can deal with it pretty safely, mm -hmm. like I, like I yeah. could there. Because yeah. I had you there and I had me, right? Yeah. You would have jumped in and stopped filming, right? Yeah. So if I can do it that way, why not? He, yeah. He's got to learn to process things, right? And novelty is important. So then, yeah, of course, let's break that picture down. We've got the sound of the skateboard. We've got potentially we've got the sound of the skateboard we've got the movement of the skateboard we've got a person on the skateboard um is it about approaching is it about going past what is it who knows and none of those questions we can answer no so what we do grab the nearest kid that looked like he likes puppies yeah <laughs> get little bugger to put his skateboard down and he was a real nice polite fellow right? yeah he so was right he puts his skateboard down what the dog do straight up onto the skateboard yeah dogs hearing the skateboard we can't be on the wheel and if we had had a problem i would have just taught the dog to ride a skateboard this week and we would have been past it yeah right like 90 percent sure so yeah and so then the dog gets on the skateboard and the dog was real happy about it and then you saw how close he came on the skateboard and of course she was a he was aware i keep calling him she but he was aware that that skateboard was there it wasn't it wasn't that the dog didn't know mm -hmm. but then because i had the food out and the dog was focused on the food, you've also got to consider that when the dog's under inducement, it doesn't mean when that food's present, it also doesn't mean necessarily that um, the dog, the dog can still displace, I guess, into that food. So the dog can still be very stressed, but desire the food more and cope by investing in that, in gra grabbing the food. So that's right. why I took the food away right and then we see the, the guy go past on the skateboard and i think also too you probably saw me do it with the other bikes and stuff when the dog looks we'll just start putting him away but when yep. the dog looks we um lose me there pal no yeah all right that's all right so when the dog looks at something new he often gets clicked for it mm -hmm. and that's very important and you've seen the way that yeah it's very important so you've seen the way that that plays out um, there in the skateboard scenario, right? So when the dog gets clicked for looking at something new or novel, something that it's interested in, it starts to come, it very quickly starts to come to see novel things as having a potential to pay. Right. Which is then the seeking, if the dog is seeking novelty because it associates it with positive things, yeah. right? That fundamentally attacks anxiety. Right? Sure, yeah. Because anxiety is the fear of something unknown. Yeah. To, to a degree. I'm grossly simplifying there. There you go, big guy. So in a whole, I mean, that whole exposure session was probably around 8 to 11 minutes total. Yep. Um, good little exposure. Yep. If we saw Boogie go through that scenario with the skateboard, yep. obviously becoming quite fearful, Overcoming that through a little bit of flooding and 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 main, maintaining of distance, yeah. And then that great exposure with that young bloke that, that helped helped us out. Yeah. Did you knock it on knock the session on the head then and there because it was such a a, a big moment for the puppy or yeah? So do you just see that as enough? So well, no, it's not enough. I don't see the good question. I, I don't see it as enough at all. I need to do more work around skateboards. And it just so happens I've got a bunch of mates at a skate park. I but run. in that context, do you think that was enough for him? Yeah, yeah, it was, absolutely. Like the dog had investigated the pieces of it. So it had already calmed down, as I said, it had already calmed down about the skateboard going past. Yeah. Um, it had already, um, like that was greatly reduced. The dog was willing to take food 
dog was willing to investigate the skateboard and that kid going at a low level on the skateboard, what more are we going to get? Yeah. Like how long do you push? Yeah. The dog's not getting fresher, right? It's a great place that it was happy. Yeah. Right? It's a great place to end it. But of course, it's not over. Yeah. It's more to go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's, 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 that's now in the memory bank. Right, so she seems good with bikes. I think it's the sound of the skateboard, and those guys were banging it off the off the rails and off stuff. Off the rails yeah. there, so um, that's good. But I've got buddies that hang at the skate park. There's a whole crew of guys there, so I'll just take them down and take her down there a little bit more. And all my dogs seem to get raced around that skate park in summer months. Yeah. So yeah, it's um, it was okay. We saw it's good for people to see. Not yeah. everything goes to plan. Yeah. Right, and um, all of these things, finding these things. And overcoming these things has a cumulative effect, mm. very positive mm. cumulative effect. Yeah. Right. And if you don't work to find these things, you don't really know your dog. Yeah. Yeah. So well, in in relation, I mean, obviously we know the boogies from you know very sound working lines. Yeah. This obviously translates hugely to pet dog. That's exactly the same. Exactly the same. They may be working with a dog that doesn't have the same level of resilience. But a lot of modern training sort of champions um, never stress the dog. If you don't stress the dog, your dog will be weak as piss. Yeah. Right? But doing it without being a dick about it, right, and doing it with the dog's emotional state in mind. We've got a barometer, which is will he take food, mm -hmm. right? We could watch his behavior. He was calmer. It was, and he was, I could feel him. I could feel his breathing slowed down. So when I'm holding him, so I'm paying attention to all of these things. He wasn't fixed on something. He was looking around, but it wasn't sort of uh, hyper vigilant. Yeah. Yeah. And so all of these, all of these things, are metrics that we can use to judge it. And and it's just as important for a pet dog, man. I mean, yeah. he's going to bite bad motherfuckers for a living, hopefully, right? And so that dog needs to be a badass. Yeah. But if you want your, your pet dog to be a, a pet badass, right, then find the edges, work around them. Yeah. Right? If you don't expose your dog to something, you can't, you don't have a right to expect that your dog is going to handle it. Yeah. Um, that's my take on it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well answered. Thanks, bud. All right. Let's go get food. Cool. <laughs> so, mate, before we head off. Yeah. I'm just... So we've just we've just packed up from the skate park exposure, and you asked me something really interesting in the car, and you're like, yeah, "Let's well, film this shit." So here's 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 my line of thinking, right? We all know the boogies come from tremendous lines. Mm. Potentially, is heading into a, a career as a as a as a real confident little badass. Yeah, I hope, hope so. That exposure that we that we filmed with regard, well, that whole session. So we we. Uh, Real quick recap: We went through the through the little um, traffic area with the kids yeah. on bikes and scooters, and there was, yeah, there was so lots of interaction there. Yeah, the dog came back to you on a click, no problem. Yeah, so just on that, so I've I've pre-established his click as um, like I've already conditioned the click or loaded the clicker. Loading's just a colloquial term for conditioning, right? Classically conditioned the click, um, and. It's, I'm not using it as a recall. It means that the reward is with me, right? So you come and take it. Yeah. That's why he would come back. And so, um, yeah, if I, to skip that forward to the last part of the stuff that you said before. So you, we got to that point and, and I think what you were saying was, so he's got all these things set up, right? They pre-exist with him mm -hmm. that allow me to do other things. Mm -hmm. Right, and so then, if I remember, your question was about where we wound up with the skateboard yep. and where I closed that distance and why I chose the distance that I chose. Yeah, like how would other people go about? How would other people go about picking that distance? Do you want to finish that off? Yeah, well, I guess my to to round round off my question, it'd be how would you? What would be the steps? Uh, easiest way. What would be the steps that you would take, or that you would advise someone to take with their puppy? In this critical exposure period, yep. while when exposing the puppy to a new stimulus, cool. Um, there's a ton of ways about it, but you want the experience to be positive, right? right. Ideally, and so I sort of touched earlier about the whole looking at things and the dog getting paid for it and whatever else. And there's a lot going on there. You could break down different things that I'm doing, but essentially that's what it is. 
Um, and so you want the exposure to be positive, right? But um, you know what? The dog didn't like it. Good. So now we've got something that we need to deal with. Yeah. Sometimes it might not be appropriate to deal with something right away. Sometimes it could be too big, too unpredictable, right? Like say a crowd of people. If a crowd of people worries a dog, you've got to you probably – there's a lot of scenarios, mm-hmm. depending on the crowd and the, whether it's an event or whatever else, where you're going to want to go away and break that picture down. Mm-hmm. But in that particular scenario, it was so nice, man, wasn't it? Like, yeah. we just had green grassy area. There was two dudes that were running the same cereals on their skateboards, right? Everything was more or less the same. Yeah. So we could repeat the exposure again and again. So in, in hindsight, looking back on it, would you have – ultimately chosen or would you recommend other people to choose a greater distance and allow the yeah, puppy to yeah, approach yeah. that stimulus more slowly? Um, I've got some I've got some advantages, right? This is not my first rodeo. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Um, having said that, if you're watching your dog, you'll know, mm-hmm. right? So absolutely, where I chose to put that dog in, in that little pocket. three-point pocket, right, I, I chose the most distance I was comfortable in choosing, mm-hmm. like I, the closest distance I was comfortable in choosing. If you're newer to it, if you're not sure if you're making the right decisions, by all means, go back a meter. Yeah. Right? Because you can always, you could always potentially spend another five minutes there. You can always go away 15, 20 minutes, put the dog in the car, come back and do the same thing again. To the same, same stimulus? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and you can always come back the next day. But um, if you're greedy, you can fuck it up. Right. right? So, and so when I say greedy, if, if you overestimate the, the amount of influence that you can have, mm-hmm. right, over your pup's behaviour, yeah. you can fuck it up. Yeah. Right? If you, what, does, what does fucking it up look like? For your, pup, for your puppy. Oh, lifelong issues for your puppy, right? Yeah, there's the answer. So, <laughs> yeah, lifelong issues for your puppy. So, and But that's why I'm not pushing. You didn't see me telling the dog off for squirming or whatever else. Yeah. Hey, dude, just we're here. You know this position, right? It's it's kept you safe before. Mm-hmm. you just got to chill, mm-hmm. right? I'm just stroking his chest. Because if he's struggling, you can still stroke him. You can't reinforce fear. You can reinforce a respondent behavior, mm-hmm. right? So if the dog... If the dog gets afraid and starts biting me and I'm patting the dog for biting me, I'm not reinforcing fear. I'm refor- reinforcing a respondent behavior that is genera- that's driven by fear. By fear, right. Right, but I'm not reinforcing fear. Right. If I could reinforce fear, then I could punish. I, I, I could punish fear. Mm. Right? So if you're, if you're scared of this dope hat, right, I can't hit you hard enough in the face to stop you being scared of the hat. I can yeah. make you more scared of me, but I can't hit you hard enough to stop you being scared of the hat. Yeah. Okay. At best, I can force you to prioritize on something else. Yeah. Right? But it doesn't stop you. So then how can you... Um, so in that situation, yeah, I was just stroking the little guy. Yeah. Right? Just calm him down, offer him a little bit of comfort. Mm-hmm. It's not going to hurt anything. I'm not going to. It's, it's, I'm not reinforcing pulling. He's not getting anywhere for pulling. Yeah. Just calmly talk to him. So I'm once a once a him. once a newbie with their, their great little puppy, yeah, is going to choose an uh, an exposure. Let's say like this, they're going to yeah. take their dog start down further. To the, b- start further back. Yep. Right. Tip number one: step. Start further, further back. back. Um, and and I another thing that really helps is actually doing things with your dog that build his confidence in you. Like I posted a video online of Boogie doing some obstacle work like yeah. just on a playground, right? That's actually what we came here today to do more of. Yeah. But that's incredibly bond building. I'm helping him. He understands that I help him. I guide him through things, you know. Mm-hmm. If you don't do a goddamn thing else with your dog, then grabbing him and sticking him in that pocket and, and, and hoping for the best is, well, that's all it is. It's hoping and hope is not a plan of action. When yeah, you're doing right. This stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and... and you know, ideally, I, I want to do something like that when – probably don't want to do something like that when the dog's fresh out of the crate and, and the pup's been asleep for an hour and it's full of piss and vinegar. Mm-hmm. Probably wanting to burn off a little steam first, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, you know, so he's a little more gassed. Yeah, he's got yeah. a little less, little less energy to invest in expressing behaviour either way. Right, yeah. Right? Um, 
and yeah, I think that those are those are useful tips, right? And don't rush. And that's one exposure, but you know, don't pick that as your first exposure. Pick some easy stuff. Pick some bond building stuff where you can help your dog do some little obstacles and whatever else. Of course, if you're going to do that, make sure your dog's okay with being touched, mm-hmm. right? Um, you want the only new thing to the dog to be that stimulus. Yeah, right. The only new thing. Yeah. Everything else is well known. If it's yeah. not well known, get off your fucking ass and train it. Wise words. Thanks, brother. No worries. Let's get that food. Cheers. <laughs>